Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at glues in the first part of a multi-part series. I'm going to examine different types of glue, when to use them, when not to use them, how they work, things to watch out for and so forth. And today of course I'm going to start with probably the most commonly used glue of all and that is epoxy. And epoxy usually comes in two bottles or two tubes. It's part A and part B. Usually there's a resin and a hardener. Uh, you mix the two together and I must emphasize you must mix them very thoroughly. If you don't mix them thoroughly enough then you don't get the full strength of the epoxy bond. So very important. Usually at least one minute constant mixing is what's required to get the two parts mixed properly together. You mix them properly together and then a chemical reaction takes place and each part, part A and part B, is a monomer. It's a it's a molecule with some open ends. Imagine like the fingers of your hand. So you've got your resin, you've got your hardener. And when you mix them together, the two parts lock together to create a very strong bond. You get co-linked bonds, which means that the, the two independent parts become a new substance with locked bonds. And that's why epoxy is so strong. That's why you can't pull an epoxy joint apart very easily. The two parts become one single linked set of molecules. And it's, it's um, amazingly strong. Now, I suppose we should look at the different types of epoxy because you can get different types of epoxy. And generally, um, normal epoxy resin, the stuff you use for wetting out fiberglass or carbon fiber, it's the same as this, the stuff you get in the bottles, except you notice it's a lot thinner. When you buy stuff in a bottle and you tip it up, it takes a long time, especially if it's cold, for the epoxy to run down to the end. That's because when they make epoxy glue, they add a thing called a thixotropic agent. Thixotropic is just a big long fancy word that means thickening agent. You know when you put corn flour in your casserole it makes the, the juices thicker? Well the same thing, they use a thixotropic agent to make the glue thicker so that it's less runny. And why do they do that? Well imagine if you're trying to glue something together and the glue kept running away from the joint. You put the glue on and it all runs off. That's what would happen without the thixotropic agent and that's why they put it in your epoxy. That's why your epoxy is thick and gooey. And of course, if you want your epoxy to run more smoothly, you can actually heat it up. Sometimes in the middle of winter, when I'm out here and it's five or 10 degrees Celsius, I heat up a pot of water, just nice and warm, maybe, you know, not boiling, but reasonably warm. And I just drop my epoxy bottles in there. And after a couple of minutes, the epoxy is quite runny. I mix it up and it goes off and it goes off quite quickly because it's warmer. Because the reaction, the chemical reaction between these two parts of the epoxy adhesive uh, is temperature sensitive. So the warmer it is, the quicker your epoxy will go off. If it's too cold, your epoxy may not go off at all. And most epoxy glues have a, a range of temperatures under which they're supposed to be used. And if you use them when it's too cold, they won't go off until it warms up. And so there's no point trying to build models in an e-glue without any heating, because the, the glue will not go off. But one thing to be very careful of when it comes to heat is that when these two chemicals, the resin and the hardener, interact, they generate heat. Now most of the time the amount of heat is so small that you don't notice it because the amount of glue is so small you don't notice it. But when you mix up larger quantities you can get a thing called an exotherm and that happens uh, the mixture of the two chemicals creates a bit of heat and that bit of heat increases the rate at which the chemical reaction takes place which means it gets hotter which means it reacts more quickly, gets hotter, reacts more quickly and eventually it can actually get so hot that it starts steaming and smoking and get too hot to hold. And as anyone who's worked with epoxies before probably knows, if you get some fiberglass resin, which is just glue without the thickener, if you get fiberglass resin and you mix up too much of it, it can actually boil and foam up and overflow the cup because it just gets so hot the damn stuff boils away. So when you're mixing up epoxy, don't mix up too much at once. You can always mix a little bit more because if you mix up too much at once, it might go off too quickly and it might exotherm and, and become really hard to deal with. So generally speaking, a couple of te a teaspoon of hardener, a teaspoon of resin at the most at a time is all you need because you're only using it for, for glue joins anyway, for joining bits of wood together in most cases. And in that respect, um, you need, we need to talk about the other aspects of epoxy because not all epoxies are created equal. I have here the Hobby King, well got it from Hobby King, it's actually a US brand of epoxy. I don't know what it is. has it written on the back somewhere. It is Bob Smith Industries Epoxy. There you go. Um, a good quality reputable brand of epoxy from the USA. Um, and I have here, I think this is, I can't read the label anymore because this, this, these bottles are so old. I think it's Parfix or Parbond. It's another US made epoxy which I got from Radical RC. And as you see, these bottles are really old and they're nearly empty because I use this, I keep this for my strongest joins. And the reason for that is, I'll show you very shortly what the reason for that is. And then I have another bottle of tubes here of some five minute, cheap five minute epoxy which is absolute crap and I wouldn't use it except when it's a really unimportant join. And 
when you're mixing up epoxy, as I say, don't mix too much at once because another thing is epoxy is heavy. These are nine ounce bottles. This is really, really heavy. This is apparently 18 ounces of epoxy here. So if you used all of this on one model, your model would weigh more than a pound more than it should because of all that glue. So epoxy is a very heavy glue. Use it sparingly. I generally use epoxy for hardwoods. Um, that's like spruce or basswood or plywood. I don't use it for balsa wood because there are other glues that are much stronger on balsa wood and much lighter. You probably didn't realize that, but it's true. So I'm going to now show you the difference between a, what I call a really good epoxy and a really bad epoxy. And I have to zoom in to do this because I don't have a cameraman. So let's have a look. On this ice cream, plastic ice cream tray here, I've mixed up three different types of epoxy. This is the really cheap one. This is the Bob Smith Industries. What is it? Um, is it Bob Smith? Yeah, Bob Smith Industries. And this is my really good stuff that I get from Radical RC. Now, you can see, obviously, different colours. Well, this is quite a pale colour. This is the really fast one. It goes off incredibly quickly and it does exotherm. I have had it get really too hot by mixing up a little bit too much. And this is the Hobby King stuff. And this is the really good stuff. Now, you watch what happens when I bend the plastic here. Well, see, it just came right off. This, the cheap stuff didn't stick to the plastic at all. And epoxy doesn't stick that well to plastic. But this came off even easier than you'd expect. Now, look, you watch when I bend it or try and bend it. Shattered into a million pieces. That is brittle epoxy. That is absolutely awful. Now, you don't want to use this piece of epoxy to glue something that's critical, like wing spars or an engine mount, because if you have any kind of sudden impact, it will shatter like glass. Now, it's very, very hard. It's an incredibly hard epoxy. You can scratch your name on glass with it almost, but it's brittle. It's not tough. Now, for those who don't know the difference between toughness and strength, I'll try and draw an analogy. A sheet of ordinary window glass you all know that, it's good on the windows. If you cut a strip of that and you hold it at the top and you hold it at the bottom and put a weight on it, it is incredibly strong. It will hold an enormous amount of weight. Window glass is very, very strong. But if you tap it with a hammer, it'll shatter into a million pieces because window glass is not tough. It's strong, but it's not tough. It doesn't withstand shocks. And so that very fast curing, cheap epoxy it's just like window glass, very strong until you have an accident or crash or something. And of course, when you have a crash or a hard landing, that's when you want your epoxy to do really work well. So I don't use that on my models. It's cheap and it's very fast to cure, but it's useless for model use. Now, here is the Hobby King one. I'll just pan into this so you can see again, zoom in so you can see. Let's have a look at the Hobby King glue. And I wrote HK underneath so I wouldn't be confused. I'll bend the plastic. It too comes off the plastic pretty easily as you would expect, because it's not designed for gluing plastic. And I'll bend this, and look at that. It just bent in half. I've, well, it's got, I can get a right angle bend out of this, I think. Look at that. A right angle bend, if I can get it in a nice place. See that? It didn't crack, it didn't shatter, it didn't explode. That is a much better epoxy. The Bob Smith epoxy is much better than the Hobby King. Now, some people make the mistake, they think, oh gosh, look, it's, it's flexible. It's no good, it hasn't gone off. But in fact, that produces a tough join a very tough join um, but it will if you bend it far enough it does shatter okay but so it is still relatively it's got some brittleness it's tougher and it's strong but it's not as brittle as that other stuff I tried now here is the Parfix stuff the stuff I get from Radical RC I'll just zoom in on this so we can all see now I'll bend the plate look it's stuck to it it didn't didn't peel off like the other ones it hasn't hasn't popped off because it's a very flexible Epoxy. In fact, I can probably, if I put my finger under the end, I can actually peel it off. I'll try and do this. It's, there we go. I peeled it off. Now, it, if I try and stretch it, I can't stretch it. It's really tough. But if I bend it, it's actually really bendy. It's almost like it's, you know, it's almost like it hasn't gone off, isn't it? Look at that. I can bend it backwards and forwards. It will not crack. It will not shatter. It will not explode into a million pieces. It is a very, very tough epoxy. That glue will... You can crash your plane and this will bend and twist and distort, but it will keep the pieces you've glued together, together. And that's what counts. So you wouldn't use this when you want a maximum stiffness, but when you want maximum toughness, that's when you use the really flexible epoxy. So unfortunately, there's no easy way to tell what is flexible and what's not, what's good and what's bad until you actually try the damn stuff. And sometimes price is not an indicator. One thing that does give a little bit of a clue is the cure time. It's been my experience that the faster curing an epoxy is, the more brittle it will be. So the, the five minute epoxy just shatters like glass. The, and this one is a, what is it? 15 minute is tougher, much tougher. And then this one, which actually is a 30 minute epoxy, the stuff from, um, from Radical, 30 minute epoxy, that is just 
tough as old boots, you can't break it. So that's really, you know, things you probably didn't know about epoxy. Now, the other thing to look at with epoxy is sensitization. And epoxy is funny stuff. You can use it every day, all your life, without any problems. You get it on your fingers, no worries, just wash it off, sweet. You can come in tomorrow, get it on your fingers, and you get a big rash and a swelling, and your hands turn red. Why is that? Well, for some reason that nobody really understands, at some stage, almost everyone who works with epoxy on a regular basis will become sensitized to it. And in the matter of 24 hours, you can go from being completely immune to becoming highly sensitive and allergic to the epoxy. So general rule of thumb is don't get this stuff on your hands unless you really have to. If you want to wear little rubber gloves or latex gloves, do it because it's not good for your skin. And every well, each time you save yourself from contact, it puts the sensitivity issue further down the line. Hopefully, if you are careful enough, you'll never become sensitized to epoxy because you don't want to be because it makes life very difficult if you're trying to use it as a glue. Um, what else have I got on my uh, thing about epoxies? Oh, when do you use it? As I said, hardwoods, plywood especially. Plywood is very good for uh, gluing uh, with epoxy because normal glues don't actually w stick that well to plywood. Like if you're using um, CA, for example, it doesn't stick very well to plywood. It, uh, it's not a good glue for plywood, but the, the plywoods, the hardwoods, stuff you use for your spars and that sort of thing, Composites, glues composites fairly well. If you've got carbon fiber or you've got fiberglass, it'll glue it pretty well. But it's important when you're using epoxy on composites, you've got to provide a rough surface because epoxy simply works by getting into the little scratches and nooks and crannies on the surface of a material and then going hard. So it sort of keys its way into the surface and it's simply a interference grip that holds the bits together. That's why it doesn't stick to plastic because this plastic's quite smooth and, and shiny and therefore when you put epoxy on there, it's got nothing to grip onto it. It's, it's, it just slides off. So that's why it doesn't work well on plastic. Um, and what I'm going to do, this is supposed to be, able to be about epoxy, but I'm going to introduce you to another really, really useful glue that is also two parts, just like epoxy, and it, it's this one. And I'll zoom up so you can have a good look at it because a lot of people probably have seen this and they thought, what on earth is this stuff? There we go. See that? It comes in a red tube and a blue tube. Just like epoxy, it's part A and part B. There we go. And it's what's called an acrylate adhesive. It's an acrylic two-part adhesive. So just like epoxy, there's a part A and part B, you mix them together and it goes off. What could be simpler? The difference is that this doesn't use the same chemicals as epoxy. And you know that when you mix it up because it really stinks. It emits a strong ammonia smell. And it's designed for use on plastics and composites usually, and sometimes metal as well. So if you have a glue join that simply isn't working with epoxy or any other glue, Try some acrylic. It's cheap as beans. Two dollars, I think, for, for two tubes. And it's got a fine metered end, so you can use only a little bit when you need to. A good example is on the hatch of my AXN, there's a little metal strip, which is used to um, be attracted by the magnet on the fuselage. So you put the, cap on, put the hatch on, the little metal strip is glued to the canopy, and it sticks to the magnet. Simple as. Now, the little metal strip came off my AXN canopy, and I tried. I thought, oh, I'll just epoxy it back on. No, didn't work. Wouldn't stick to the plastic, wouldn't stick to the metal. It kept falling off again. I tried some CA. That didn't work either. I tried some acrylate. Hasn't come off in three months. So there you go. That's a really good glue. And as I say, it's an acrylic. It works on a similar principle, but not the same as epoxy. Um, you should have this. This is what I call my glue for things that won't be stuck with anything else glue. And it's amazing what it will stick. It'll stick just about any damn thing. So get yourself some and try it out. Two bucks, you can't afford not to try out acrylate. It's especially good if you've got, say you've got a fiberglass fuselage and you've got to put in a former or, or some other composite or some metal. Use this instead of epoxy because it's much better than epoxy for that. And it's also really, really tough. And we know what tough is because I told you what it meant before. So that's it. That's the first of the glue uh, program of episodes from RC Model Reviews and it was epoxy and I, th I hope I've covered everything. If you've got any questions then you can either go to the rcmodelreviews.com forums and ask them there or you can put the question on the bottom of this video and I will try and get time to answer it. Coming up soon I'll be doing CAs, I'll be doing uh, normal woodworking glues like aliphatic and PA, uh, PVA. I've got, uh, what else have I got there? I think there's a couple of other glues I'm going to look at, polyurethane, a few others. So there you go, glues, episode one, epoxy. Thanks for watching.